I'm Ari Redboard. Welcome to a very special Flash TRM Talks. I am here with friend and former Treasury colleague, Caroline Hill, who is leading so many amazing efforts now on the policy team at Circle. Uh, thank you so much for joining me. Thanks for having me, Ari. To be totally honest, I've wanted to do this with you forever. <laughs> So I am, I am so glad uh, we can finally talk a uh, little crypto policy in this setting. And uh, this setting right behind us through this beautiful window is uh, the U.S. Capitol, where there is a lot going on uh, just in a sort few of crypto things. policy, just a few things. And it's been a busy week uh, really across, uh, across the U.S. government um, when it comes to activity. Uh, there is a hearing tomorrow on uh, U.S. dollar dominance, sort of, um, you know, how do we maintain the hegemony of the U.S. dollar, so to speak, in the global financial system? Obviously, uh, you know, 95% of, of global stable coins are backed by the U.S. dollar, including uh, sort of the leading uh, company in the space, Circle, uh, with USDC. Would you talk a little bit about sort of how you think about dollar dominance and, and maybe this hearing in particular? Absolutely. Uh, there are a few things going on on Capitol Hill, as you mentioned, so I'm glad we're able to chat today. And I think it's significant even that the Hill is having this hearing about U.S. dollar dominance. It's not just about crypto, um, but this is a phenomenon that we've seen for years, and you and I saw this at Treasury, which is how are countries trying to move away from the dollar? Some of it is in their self-interest of promoting their own currency. Some of it's in response to sanctions. But it certainly is part of the broader conversation today around what does the future of CBDCs look like? What does the future of U.S. dollar stablecoins look like? So I'm really happy that the House Financial Services Committee under uh, Patrick McHenry is looking at this, and I think looking at this critically, because it, it, it will inform where does the United States move in terms of its own policies on what's a U.S. CBDC look like and what are U.S. backed stablecoins? Um, how does that role play into the dollar dominance question? It's so interesting. In the last Congress, I testified before this same committee on really this same issue and pointed over and over again to that number around sort of U.S. backed stablecoins. Like this is a potential private sector answer to having people globally engage with the U.S. dollar. I think it's just such a critical piece of all of this. Um, staying with House Financial Services, which I mean, I guess everything is going on there this week or really, uh, you know, recently, um, stablecoin legislation, obviously something near and dear to your heart and the policy team at Circle. Um, where are we? Uh, obviously, I thought, quite frankly, at the end of the last Congress, we may have something. And now we've seen it sort of, you know, play out over the last several months. Where are we and, and, and where are we headed? Yeah, we had uh, legislation that was drafted at the end of last Congress. Um, but of course, the conversation restarted with this Congress. And so now we're looking at draft bills that are both uh, drafted by the Republicans and the Democrats on the House Financial Services Committee. And the positive thing about this is that there's a lot of bipartisan agreement on those building blocks. Of course, uh, if we had full agreement, we would have legislation passed and, and law made. So we're not quite there yet. Um, so there are still outstanding questions that are being looked at on both sides. Um, but what's clear is that there's bipartisan agreement that this is probably the first thing to for Congress to address when it comes to crypto regulation. Um, and there's bipartisan agreement that we should do this and we should do this soon. So I'm very hopeful that we see some of these last remaining issues around regulation, around um, federal regulation or states regulations hammered out here. And we um, are able to move this legislation out of the draft working stages into the committee and onto the House floor for a full vote. But there, there's been a narrative over time in the crypto space about sort of, yeah, you, you know, we don't want regulation or regulation is bad for the space. Um, why does regulation matter in terms of stable coins? And, and why why do you want uh, clear clear regulation here? Yeah, clear thankfully, legislation? thankfully, I think we're moving away from that perspective now as we've seen a number of issues around consumer protection, around custody of funds that have happened um, when those are not clear regulation. And I think living in this gray zone of what is what is allowed and what is not allowed um, really stifles innovation and having clear rules of the road for stable coins. And then hopefully the broader crypto market uh, will really let your developer, software developers, startups, innovators really know how to engage in the market. And we're seeing that in Europe with their passage of Mika is that now people know whether they like it or not. This is what you can do and this is what you can't do. And I think that 
Europe is making the United States realize that uh, and moving even a little faster. Yeah, what's amazing. I mean, we were both at Treasury together when uh, Libra launched, which is really was really the catalyst for Mika and so much of what is going on in the world right now. Um, look, I, I, I um, there there was a proposed uh, bill or, or proposed yeah proposed draft legislation uh, last week that came out of Congress that really sort of is a framework. Uh, or proposed a framework. It has definitions, securities, and commodities, and sort of really gets into sort of the broader questions. But the, the conventional wisdom has always been that if there was anything that you have general agreement from industry and Capitol Hill and across the aisle, it would be stable coins. Um, is that still sort of your view of the world and where we'll land? We'll land on something soon? I, I think so. The United States has has taken stable coins as a small sliver of the crypto market and really tried to address that first. Um, and that's come from the Biden administration, that's come from the Trump administration, that's come from Congress. And so while Europe uh, passed this all-encompassing framework, uh, the United States has, has looked at it in a much more narrow way. Um, and I think, frankly, that's the best way to, for progress to be made. There are still a lot of outstanding questions on how do you regulate the broader crypto markets here in the United States uh, with our market regulators. And so uh, stablecoin legislation, I think, will move easier and faster. Fantastic. Uh, it would not be a TRM talks unless we talk a little illicit finance. Of course. Um, absolutely. And I know obviously that's an area that's that's so important to you and the work you did at Treasury for so many years was this was the focus. Um, how do you think about AML um, and compliance and illicit finance generally at, at, at Circle? It's a huge part of what we do and even our core culture. Um, I, you know, we were lucky and, and part of the, the team at Treasury that really outlined clear regulations around AML CFT for the crypto market. Um, and so those rules, unlike some of the other broader uh, rules that are being debated in Congress right now, the AML rules are very clear. Um, at least I think so. And so it's a it's a huge part of what we do at Circle to ensure that any U.S. dollar USDC, US dollar coin um, has the right compliance controls around it. We partner really closely, as you know, with TRM to do that. Um, and I think that that's one of the exciting things about the industry is the, the transparency where you can actually see illicit finance moving and, and see illicit financial flows moving on chain um, is a, a way to track illicit financial flows that you can't do in traditional finance. Um, so it's it's really incredible the work that that TRM and blockchain analytics companies do, and we're lucky to have you as a partner to do that. Amazing. Uh, thank you so much. Again, I've wanted to do this forever. So cool to sit down with you today and uh, come back for like a full-blown uh, TRM talks on all things stablecoin soon. Let's do it. Amazing. Yeah. Thank you so much.